Good day, everyone. I just um, had a few thoughts and figured I'd share them if if anyone wanted to hear. Basically, just my thoughts about what's going on right now in the market. Just a recap of what I'm seeing. So let's let's get into it. Before I begin, please uh, take a few seconds to read this. You can pause the video if you need to, but uh, just please read it. And uh, let's go. So just to reiterate, this is just five, six things that I, uh, what I'm seeing that I just noticed in the past week or were highlighted in the past week. The first thing is that while the market looks rather unhealthy recently, I did notice that sentiment based on the AAII sentiment survey, which is free, a nice tool I like to look at, sentiment is worse. Sentiment is quite bearish. Now, if you're bullish, a quite bearish sentiment is good because people have likely already sold. Is it as extreme as it will get? I don't know. We'll see. I I haven't seen any capitulation yet in the stock market, so we'll keep watching for that. But right now it's kind of just grinding away lower and lower. Not healthy. The next thing I noticed is that, or was called to my attention, is that smart money, and you can see on the left the smart money index, based on institutions buying and selling in the last 30 minutes of the day, which is when they generally do their transactions, it is at a level that, has, that hasn't been this low in 22 years. It's a long time, and that is something I'm watching. Um, not that they necessarily get everything right, um, but in the past, when it has reached this low, it hasn't happened that often, and it's a time when the market's generally been declining, but hasn't been declining long after. If you try and match up the times, you'll see that when the smart money starts buying, it could be a time to buy. The other thing I've noticed on the same uh, track is that bonds haven't really been performing well that well recently considering the extent of the market sell-off. So looks like risk parity is still not working. So the next thing is along with demand for commodities, it appears like US growth is maybe not contracting, but the pace of US growth looks to be slowing. And you could clearly see that that in oil, there's some future demand concerns or potential oversupply right now. I don't know which, but it amounts to the same thing. Whereas metal, as seen on the left, copper at least, has not been declining uh, along with oils. Maybe that's because it was hit earlier. Maybe that's due to other market mechanics. But basically, up until now, Copper has held up surprisingly well. And that leads me to my next point. Being that while it seems to have been going on for a while, I hadn't noticed it until this week, but there seems to be a rather strong correlation between Chinese equities and copper. And you can see here the uh, candles are the are uh, the copper futures and the green line is Chinese equity. They diverged a little bit on the way down, but their movements seem to be tracking each other rather well, which makes sense considering that the uh, majority of, well, the biggest consumer of um, commodities in the world, at least base metals, recently has been China. Now, when the market is not everything going up at all times, um, which it was in 2017 and other years in the past, but anyway, um, there are two flights to safety. There's the uh, consumer staples, 
which is for some reason where people put their money. I don't necessarily, I mean, I get it, but I don't think it's necessarily wise. But anyway, the funds that cannot go to cash for any extended period of time and are bearish on the market and maybe not allowed to short, maybe not, well, I there's tons of case specifics, but it looks like they have may have turned to the safety trade, and the, I call it the royal safety trade, in that you can see here on the left is Franco Nevada, which is a gold royal, the biggest, a gold royalty company, and um, it it could be a, a hideout trade for funds who have to be in equities or are not allowed to be in physical gold or something. There's a whole bunch of rules out there depending on um, funds. And basically the one, the picture on the left is uh, Franco Nevada. On the right is Sandstorm Gold, both gold royalties. And uh, they seem to be performing well since the uh, last gold flop. Now, with all this stock market moving down, equity is moving down, one could wonder, are we cheap yet? And the answer for me is, well, the traditional answer, at least, if you don't have any view on, uh, strong views on the currency, but if you look at the chart on the left, that's the uh, Peter Schiller cyclically adjusted price to earnings uh, multiple, which is still one of the most overpriced uh, market conditions of all time. And if you don't believe in price to earnings or think there's a problem because of cycle length or 2008 or whatever, the chart on the right, which may look even more overvalued relative to history, is the Warren Buffett indicator, which is um, corporate equities to GDP, which looks a tad stretched. And while these charts are a month old, or slightly under a month old, we're still not exactly close to cheap in equities terms based on traditional valuations. Now this leads me to my last point, which is what we have not seen. We have not seen any capitulation in the market, big gap down, close up type move, type just dump everything. We haven't seen that. We have not also seen panic selling. The VIX hasn't gone, hasn't spiked again to higher. We want to see a spike in the volatility index, but there's we haven't seen any giving up on uh, being bullish yet, and that's not a good sign for bulls. So would not surprise me if the market continued to trudge downwards. That being said, we are at a technical resistance level, but it would not surprise me if the market continued to trudge sideways, downwards, until we saw this capitulation. That's what I'm, that's what basically what I'm seeing in the market right now. Now, before I end off, I would like to open this up to questions and comments. Please bear in mind, I'm not predicting the market's going to crash. I'm not predicting the market's going to go up. I'm bullish on some things, bearish on others. So don't take this as I hate your favorite stock, even though I didn't mention any stocks in this video. Or actually, I mentioned a few. But let's keep the conversation constructive. Um, I'm just pointing out what I'm seeing. Obviously, everything could reverse tomorrow, and I'm not saying that that won't happen. But until then, until we see what actually happens, let's try and figure this out together. So with that, I want to say thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.